Hey there, Bob from Oregon's Constant Gardener. Welcome to the OCG Fam Show to you, my YouTube buddies. What's going on? What do you got going in your grow? Let me know about that in the comments. And speaking of the comments, we got a comment from Australia. It's from Josh Illa, and he says, Hey, Bob, massive fan. Keep up the fantastic work. I'm down under in Australia. Quick question. And as you can see, it goes on a little bit here. So let me just paraphrase what he's talking about. What his question is, is uh, if you look at the feeding chart, come on down here. Here it says early vegetative, mid-vegetative, late vegetative, early flowering, and so on. And Josh is like a one-legged man in an ass-kicking contest because he's dealing with a plant that veges and flowers all at the same time. It just keeps going, you know, it'll flower and then it'll uh, slow down a little bit, speed up, doing its own thing. And so he's like, well, heck, how do I use this schedule with my peppers? And this begs a bigger question, but first let's just get straight into it with Josh's question. Josh, what I would do is I would just stick to the uh, late vegetative, early flowering in there. As soon as you see some flower sites on the plant, just stick with that, go all the way through with that, and you don't have to change that. So that's that, but the question is, what's the deal with this feeding schedule? And the deal is, is that this schedule was made for one very specific plant, one very hungry plant, one very malleable plant that you can really work with all the way through its cycle that has a distinct flower and veg cycle. But for most garden type vegetables, this is ineffective and uh, not a great schedule to work with. So we really need something because a lot of people are growing just straight up vegetables with this thing. We need to work on a schedule that we can use for growing just regular type vegetables. Maybe it's not even a schedule, it's just kind of a guide. So I'd like to do something with that. I'd like to get you all talking about in the comments about what vegetables you're growing and what issues you're having with those and what questions you have with regard to nectar. So we can put together something like that, get those questions, work with those, this comments in the comments, and talk to Scott and put something together. But this also begs the question, would you use this stuff for just growing straight up vegetables? And I think maybe you would, because um, what you're getting from this and what we're doing when we're doing this kind of stuff is we're trying to push, but we're not always pushing for bigger yield or bigger Scoville numbers or bigger whatever. A lot of times we're doing this, we're saying the word push, but we mean the word control, because we want to control what we're doing. We want to mold what the plant's doing for us. And I also wanted to say that a lot of why we're able to push with this is because it's fast, because it's natural inputs. So what this has for you, what you get from nectar is it's natural inputs in a plant available form. And because it's available, we think about, well, you know, it's quick. We can get into the plant quick. We can get more, 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 more in. But it's also quick to leave the plant. And that's where a lot of value can be gained from this. As a, like a contrast to like a super soil thing, when you're doing some kind of super soil solution, a great way to go, but you pack all that stuff you're going to need for most of the life of that plant into that soil, and then you just let it go. And hopefully what you've done is the right thing, because if it's not, you could have some real problems. And even if it is the right thing, even if you did guess right, as things go on, it might have been a situation where you may wanted to change it as you were going through the thing because of uh, environmental issues or just, you know, something you thought of at the end or something you see in the plant that you could have made some changes to make the plant even better still. And that's the value of these things is that, um, you know, instead of just throwing something in there and going the whole way through the plant cycle, is you can make changes as you go through the cycle. So even if we're growing some just regular garden variety type vegetables, we may want to do that. So let's talk about that a little bit just for the next couple of shows about what we're gardening with as far as our just regular vegetable gardens and see what we can do to use some of this stuff to maybe make that better. That's the show for today. I love you, and I'll see you on Monday. We'll be talking gardens. The OCG Fam Show, it's pretty good. It happens every day. It's the OCG Fam Show. See you on Monday.